Hi, my name is Steve Kinsley. I'm the Chief Wackadoo at Wackadoo Information Systems. Today we're talking about import templates. Now import templates are used to do bulk data extraction or bulk data import, I should say, into our system from some other kind of report that you don't have control over. This is used in a couple of our applications, but most notably in teacher gifts and in sponsor care. Now, I'm using the Teacher Gifts application as my example, but all of what I'm going to talk about applies equally. I will point out those things that are application specific that we're looking at. Now, when you log into the Teacher Gifts application, you land on the Teachers page. Down here at the bottom, in every application that we do at Wackadoo, you will have a Custom Templates menu entry. And on that, you'll see Report Templates and whatever other templates are applicable for that application. In this case, we have Import Templates and Email Templates. We're talking about Import Templates today. Now, Teacher Gifts was written specifically for the Public School Foundation, or PSF, that works with our kids' local school system to help raise money for teachers because everybody knows that public school systems are under and teachers themselves are under huge financial pressures. So we have a format that comes from the PSF's third-party website where they do their donations. They get a report out and now they want to send an email out to all of the different people. Well, in order to do that, they have to pull that data in, all of the gift data. So we have a randomly generated data file here in the format that that system uses, and we're going to extract breakfasts. Now, you'll see that we call this report or this import template PSF breakfast only, imports breakfast from the PSF tab, delimited custom report from the third party website. Um, we don't have any size here. It is a tab delimited report. So we watch and we drag this over and we see that's what the data looks like. You see when the file was last modified, etc. We see that we auto detected that it was a tab delimited file. And that was when we, we learned that when we defined this particular one. We could put a new one in if we wanted to. On the left, we see a list of fields that are going to be imported or that can be imported. Important difference because we don't do all of these fields. We don't need them all for our purposes. This is going to vary by application. Your application will have a different set of fields available to it. In this case, if I click on teacher first name, I see that get highlighted. And down below, I see the name of the field. I see the row that I clicked on, the, the, the record number, if you will. The zero is the header row. I see what column I clicked on because this is a tab delimited file. And so I know that I'm working on columns. Uh, it's less important for the length because uh, if I know that I'm tab delimited, that can be almost any length string. But if I was working on a character delimited file, meaning it mattered what the offset was within that file, then length would matter a little bit more and column would not matter so much. The field is required. I have to have a teacher first name to do this uh, import correctly. Um, I am extracting all of the data that's in there. I am not doing some sort of simple dividing character thing before or after the first or last. Uh, I could do space, comma, whatever kind of delimiter you might find in there. Um, or in a more advanced situation, I could do a regular expression to do my extraction. And that's uh, advanced usage and you should contact us um, if you want help with that. Um, but if you have a field that's got some uh, weird formatting in it, you might need to do a regular expression. You also want to then modify or interpret how that final value is perceived in the system. Now, if you grab it as is, it's just a string, and or you could do a date or a number, um, or if it's a string, you could do an uppercase, a lowercase, title case, or uppercase on that if you wanted to do an automatic conversion. Um, again, it depends on the format that you've got there. Um, and the final valid final value is valid if it's anything. We don't care what's in there. We're just going to grab all of it, and that's the value that we've got. These last two things, um, we're, we have a mechanism for hard coding a value, and we'll show you that. And we have a mechanism for looking at something in the header and putting that on each one, if we would like. And we'll show you that. So teacher last name happens to be column 10. That's really the only difference here. It's still an as-is string. School, still an as-is string, but we're in column 11. Uh, gift date, now we're over at column 0, and we notice that the format that we're doing is a date. We're grabbing all of it. 
Still, we don't care what that date is, but we're grabbing it as a date. Internally, we recognize two, three dozen different file or date formats, I should say. Um, so you don't really have to worry about that. Just make sure that all the information gets in there. If I look at gift count, I see that I get my first number. Now we're going to do a little filtering on what that value is. I'm in column 15, and in column 15, if I see a number that's greater than zero, then this is a valid record to import. I only care if I have something to look at for this particular value. I'm looking at breakfasts in this case. Okay, I'm going to look at gift type now. On gift type, I'm actually down here in the last two that I talked about. I'm actually looking at the header and I see amount dollar breakfast. Now I could do an after the last space and you can't see it until I highlight it, but that's actually a space character over there. And I could grab the word breakfasts right out of there if I wanted to. Or I could use a regular expression and grab just breakfast out of there. But I don't want to do that because that's more complicated than I need. I know that if I have a valid thing here, I'm looking at a breakfast or possibly more than one, but I want the word breakfast in every one of these. And so I say the value is the same for every resource that is valid. And I'm going to say breakfast. Boom. Done. Everything's going to have a breakfast value in there. A value of the string breakfast. I look at the gift amount. Again, I only want things that are greater than zero. I'm going to look at the gift names. Now, this is an application-specific thing. Uh, this is the name of the child uh, that the gift is given in the name of. I have a gift note. You'll notice that that's an awfully long string there in column 21, and I don't particularly care. It can be however long you want it because it's column 31. Again, the joy of tab-delimited data. I don't have a gift comment. I don't care about the gift comment, but there's another column that could be out there that would be the notes to the teacher. Um, if you look at your headers, you see something called notes and there and notes to teachers there. And you know, you could put, you could, if you wanted to extract it, it turns out that they used to use two different kinds of notes and that got very complicated and they just went to a single note, but they didn't change the file format. But because this is red, that means I don't have that particular file format or field definition saved. It's a brand new thing and, and I would have updated my column, I would update my length, and I'm just ignoring it. I click on first name for the, the parent, again required uh, string as is, anything I want last name, string as is required, and again donor email is not required any more than gift comment was. We're not doing anything with that. We're In this application we don't need those fields. So you saw a string, many strings actually. You saw a date. You saw a numeric value, multiple numeric values. And you saw a static value or a header value. We could have done this any of a number of ways to put the word breakfast into this field. The easiest one was just to hard code it by saying it's the same for all resources. So now, this is where we get into application specific stuff because when we're talking about an application it only matters what you're importing and each application that uses an import template is importing a main thing and in this application that happens to be GIFs. It might not be GIFs, it would be something else in another application. So let's go to the GIFs page and take a look and see how this comes in. And again application specific that it's the gifts page but on whatever that main page is if you look at the import button and see that little up arrow that means that I've got a list of things that I could import. Now this export format is described at length in the import export video which is a separate video I'm not even going to talk about it today but these other three are the same ones that we saw on the import templates page because that's exactly where they're taken from. So what we want to do is we want to use that particular import template, the PSF breakfast only, and we're going to import data out of our randomly generated file. Now, again, this is all randomly generated data, but you can do that same activity on your actual report file. So it's very simple to define your fields. Let's double click on that. Now, as an application specific thing, 
what happened is very quickly it sucked all of the gifts in. But now, this is application specific, it's assigning those gifts, it's looking at the list of teachers and it's doing the comparisons that it needs to do in order to allocate them to the teachers automatically. So computers are good at this kind of stuff. Uh, this wasn't written terribly efficiently, so it does take a little bit longer. Um, we're using search engine relevance and some things like that underneath the hood. You don't care about any of that. This is gonna run till about 9% before it stops. So don't worry that it's gonna take that long. But What's happened is it's pulled in all of that data and has allowed the system to do a bunch of just grunt work for you in order to do the assignments in this application and Sponsor Care does a similar thing. And here we go, we've already got our, our stuff there. Success, we see that we have imported 415 different GIFs and we have done the assignments over here. We could have pulled in donor email if we wanted to, we chose not to because we're not doing anything with it. Um, but we could have, we could have populated that. And if I click on this first gift, I see that uh, Anthony Bowers donated in the name of their child, Lily, and their gift note to their teacher was, you, you imbecile, you bloated idiot, you stupid fathead from the Maltese Falcon. If you like old movies, that might be funny to you. I love old movies. So that's pretty much everything that you need to know about import templates. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us as shown on the Contact Us page at wackadoo.info or wackadoo.org. Thank you.